Hello and welcome to the Popcorn Junkies. We are reviewing a film called The Substance. Um, yeah, you might have seen posters for this, you might have seen articles for this, but you might not have known they were articles or posters for this, because you will have probably only seen, or mainly seen, Demi Moore being interviewed pretty much everywhere. Uh, this is the film starring Demi Moore, but also starring Margaret Qualley, uh, and also starring Dennis Quaid, principally around a uh, supporting cast of other people that we don't know. Uh, this is a new film by Coralie Fargiat. Uh, yeah, she's a French filmmaker. She made a film called Revenge a few years ago. Incredibly almost graphic novel-esque kind of feminist revenge thriller uh, in which there was a lot of bloodletting and extraordinary violence, but quite stylistic. Um, now, this film is, what is it? It's the substance. This is essentially a film that is about uh, the, <laughs> the pursuit of beauty, the fake, um, slightly seedy, uh, slightly rotten, sort of unsettling kind of obsession uh, that not just Hollywood, but society, culture, the world has with the pursuit of beauty, especially in and amongst women over a certain age. Uh, the director has gone to great lengths to say that she's parked this within the higher echelons of Hollywood, but very much the subject matter of this film is, to, you know, the intention is that this, this film is a satirical fairy tale or horror story, really. Um, and this is an epic... Um, surprising, challenging, um, rapidly made. I mean, it's it's fierce, it's fiery, it's it's brutal, it's body horror, it's satirical, it's extreme. It pulls no punches, and it's not at all f afraid to kind of go really gloopy and close up in depicting uh, its kind of uh, the, the horrors of, of of pursuing beauty. I'll tell you something that I kind of immediately sprung to mind, just in, even in the press surrounding this film. Is does anyone remember that film from years ago? I think it was Goldie Horn. Was the other actress Meryl Streep? I'm not too sure. Uh, a film called Death Becomes Her where essentially I think the two characters keep sort of using kind of plastic surgery even beyond their deaths or until the point that they die and they're so plastic surgeried up that they're they're sort of fake corpses wandering around essentially sort of melting in the sun of, of Beverly Hills. So this is a satirical body horror film focused on the pressures of beauty and staying beautiful in the mind and soul and body of a fading star. And that fading star, that fading actress is played by Demi Moore. Her name is Elizabeth Sparkle. <laughs> How beautiful is that? She sparkles bright. Um, and so, as I say, the first opening shot of this film is the sort of time-lapsed construction of a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. And if you're, anyone has been to Hollywood Boulevard or around Hollywood, you know, you get these stars plonked in the floor. It's a big deal if you're a new actor, new actress, you get your star and you're, you're there forever, just immortalised on the floor for people to walk over, marvel at, take photographs of, and eventually completely forget and potentially drop their Big Mac on it. Now, this opening shot kind of tells you everything that's good about this film in the first two and a half minutes, but also does point to those aspects that, for me, didn't work in the film too. Frustrating, I recognise, for a man to be reviewing this because in many regards, what do women make of this? Because this film is, is where I think this film is at its strongest, isn't really in its style or even necessarily its story arc, which verges on the patently ridiculous and the patently sort of overbearing and heavy handed. And I would I would argue that the director, Coralie Fargette, would probably say, that's the point. We're, we're going for heavy handedness. We're going for satire. We're going for irony but sometimes um, I feel that this the, this film's message ultimately got lost in its lack of subtlety we've had this little kind of pre-title little sort of shot of a Hollywood Walk of Fame star and then it gets old and then it gets damaged and that tells us she's she's aged and she's now no longer a star of Hollywood she's just doing kind of workout videos she's doing kind of you know she's doing aerobics shows sort of Jane Fonda-esque um, and she's kind of still you know basically making use of her body but it's in the kind of it's the swan song of body usage or or self-exploitation. She she's only got so much more she can use of her body. And so she has this terrible accident, which is an incredibly arresting moment, actually. She gets caught in this, she gets hit by, by a car and is taken into hospital. And then she's kind of introduced to the idea that she could have this thing called the substance, uh, which if she phones this number, calls it in, gets this package delivered or goes, goes down to this curious kind of sort of derelict place, she can get this substance, the substance. Now, where this film is most interesting in a weird way is where I don't think it intends to be. This film is essentially about that hidden dark, the dark web-like underbelly 
of Hollywood and fame. And, you know, you've got the film lots, you've got the studios, you've got the film execs played by people like Dennis Quaid. You know, they're filmed in lurid, extraordinary close-up. We're not talking close-up. We're, we're talking, we're not even talking ECU, extreme close-up. We're not even talking e -E -E ECU, extremely extreme close-up. We're talking macro. We're talking microscopic, the footage. And I would argue that one of the mistakes this film makes right at the beginning is it overuses the use of kind of gory over is it ASMR sound of eating it over amplifies it over stresses that and it over it goes into too much of a close-up I'm a big big fan of a close-up and so one of the problems with this film right at the beginning I felt was it labored its message too much and did didn't allow us as or didn't let me allow me as the viewer to do most of the heavy lifting you can infer stuff you can read stuff into it there was very little room even just in these early sequences of setting the scene where I felt we were allowed to kind of construct this world or create this world or settle into this world in whatever way we wanted to as a viewer, rather than the director telling us, this guy's disgusting. The way he eats is foul. Masculinity is controlling. It's repulsive. The way he eats is absolutely just hideous and actually speaks to the gloopy, gloppy sound of not just eating, but the gloopy, gloppy sound of a body too and all that kind of stuff. So quite heavy handed, but still brilliantly shot. You've seen it in the trailer. Very, you know, very stylishly shot. Very kind of, you know, almost kind of so pristine and sterile that you're kind of it's kind of unsettling it is unsettling so that said she orders this kit and where again i think this film is most interesting is in the ideas it kicks up it kicks up a load of interesting ideas this film i mean it is clearly riffing on the kind of current trend for things like a zen pick and stuff like that it's also you know potentially it made me think of as i was kind of going to say earlier made me think a little bit of, of stories like the matthew perry story the idea of sourcing in, uh, ingredients sourcing drugs sourcing kind of you know or going for kind of tweakments and treatments that are perhaps on the danger side of kind of you know dangerous side of legality and so you know you're dicing with death and and in many regards this film is all about the faustian pact that demi moore's character elizabeth sparkle makes with this the substance you know the, the manufacturers or makers of this substance she it's a faustian pact she sells her soul to the substance which she then injects into herself or kind of goes through the process of injecting into her um, and, in, and in return she's given the opportunity to be young for a day a week uh, so she can be you know she and they go to great lengths in this film to use kind of titles to give us the instructions you get you know boxes of packaging with the packaging clearly you know delineated this is the activator this is the advert it's very sort of clinical it's very linear it's very literal and in a weird way, what they do in this film is they go to great lengths to show the intricacies of the process of her plugging in, taking out, eat the food packet, activate it and all this kind of stuff. And then they kind of completely lose interest in following through with the logic of it. So, yeah, many things spring, spring to mind as you're watching this. You're thinking Cronenberg. You, you, you're sort of thinking, you know, those kind of the body horrors of things like Videodrome and things like that. And basically the trade off is, is that she can live as a younger version of herself. Uh, which is the Margaret Qualley version of her, uh, for a day a week. And so they switch. Now, we have a, an extraordinarily, uh, you know, gruesome and, and visceral kind of body horror moment where uh, Demi Moore's character shoves the activator in and, and Margaret Qualley, her younger self, is born, is born out of her spine. She splits open. She she gives birth to herself. And I think this is quite interesting. Yeah, again, as I say, the interesting ideas in here, but the execution is sometimes a, a little bit kind of a little bit sort of I don't know literal in a weird way I don't know if that's the right word it's sort of a little bit obvious or a little bit kind of it doesn't leave room for us to bring anything to the table I think one of the great things about body horror or horror or even films that are unsettling like by David Lynch or Guy Madden and people you know these sorts of filmmakers is that your left feet, you're able to kind of read stuff into things and you'll be able to, you're able to sort of, a bit like with a book, you're able to take your own ideas away. Whereas this film very much kind of forces you to just, just accept what it's presenting you with. And so consequently, there were times, actually, I have to be honest, there were moments in this where it felt remarkably kind of naive in its filmmaking and naive in its kind of even execution of certain scenes when she bump into people you know all the men in this film are, are, are totally over the top they're meant to be they're caricatures they're almost all kind of grinning <laughs> gurning idiots with Dennis Quaid being reduced down to complete sort of um just I suppose the argument would be they're reduced down to the gibbering evil 
and the gibbering impulses of what really drives most white male middle class men in control in suits and all that kind of stuff or men that are just interested in women for sex so what we have is this curious film which which lasts an eternity it feels where margaret qualley is born out of De demi moore demi moore's alter ego goes out and lives a life and, and has fun and does all this sort of stuff uh, and it and does this by draining some of the sort of spinal fluid if you like from Demi Moore who's asleep in a sort of cupboard at home and then in return Demi Moore kind of will come back out for the rest of the week and then for another day in that week the younger version of herself will go out and yet of course the problem in the film is the more you take the more the young one takes out or the more the old one takes out in order to live the young life the, the more the damage is that, that happens to you and so consequently what starts to happen is this trade-off and this is where it becomes a little bit like the Oscar Wilde story uh, Dory the picture of Dorian Gray is that as she essentially uh, indulges in traveling back or being her younger self and the film goes to great lengths and the, the substance the makers of the substance you know go to great lengths to tell her you are one and I think again this is a problem in the film they are one but they're really not one and they, they pull against each other um, you know the younger self wants to be freer but the younger self is tied to the older person because you know the older Demi Moore because she has to keep draining this stuff out of her bloody spinal column and then the older self is thinking oh, well I want to be young but but here's one of the problems that I had with this film is that I got no sense of what Demi Moore, the older her, was getting from the younger one going out because there felt it felt like there was too much of a cleft between what Margaret Qualley was experiencing. I would have understood it more if, if when the younger version of Demi Moore, Margaret Qualley, when she went out and indulged and drank and had sex and did all these things, if there was some kind of payback or return for Demi Moore lying in the you know lying in the sort of the, the, in the cupboard or the cubby hole. So where this one's kind of intriguing is the idea is good. The idea of older self versus younger self would one like to kind of bring into the world a, an idealized perfect version of yourself that could go out and live yes if you could have part of it and because but I, I, I didn't ever felt Demi Moore would come round when it was her chance to kind of come back round and Margaret Qualley had to kind of go to bed for a bit I never got a sense that she'd got anything from it and in fact far from getting anything from it all she gets is she gets older because of course margaret qualley the younger version of her becomes addicted to the joys and the, and the, and, the, and the sheer kind of pleasure of going out and and and, and taking drugs and drinking and having sex etc etc and yet you know she, she she takes it too far she becomes addicted to it she become, becomes addicted to being loved because of course margaret qualley starts to get all the jobs that the older demi moore who's now sort of locked in the cupboard in the bathroom she she was losing and and, and so, yes, it's a Faustian pact. Yes, it's a Faustian swap. But this film has a few issues that it, it struggles to kind of get over. For example, one of them being, I thought it was incredibly, I hate to use the word brave, it's so, so fucking patronising, especially coming from a white man. But I thought it was refreshing. Okay, let's say, let's say that, not brave, refreshing, to see Demi Moore showing herself or her, her body at the age that it's at, it's still a beautiful body. She's obviously been, you know, had at the top of her physical game for most of her life. But you can see that it's, you know, she's showing herself in a way that most actresses over a certain age in Hollywood, famous actresses, would never choose to show themselves. You can see, you can see the signs of aging. You can see the shape has shifted. You can see things like cellulite. You can see where, you know, she's an old woman, essentially. And I think it's an incredibly uh, bold performance by Demi Moore, taking ownership of her aging body. Now, where, it, where so for, for all of its bravery and all of its cleverness and all of the kind of radical kind of feminist politic of showing that body, etc. It then goes to, you know, the other end of the spectrum and shows us Margaret Qualley's young body, the body that she's had, the, you know, she's entered into this Faustian pact in order to be able to have. And the film spends an awfully long time uh, showing us uh, just how beautiful and pert and bouncy and curvaceous and everything else uh, the younger body is you could argue that the film engages in the very same uh if you like objectification and um sort of titillation and exploitation of the young female form uh, as the very men that this film is seeking to send up the men are just gibbering idiotic uh, sort of observers they're the kind of they're the kind of characters that you would expect if you go on a sort of if you headed down to hell and there were just sort of crowds of gibbering sort of primal sort of they may as well have just been penises running around they're all so generic and suited and disgusting you know eating food in an, in, a, in a way that just makes you hate their orifices and you're thinking oh my god these guys are dictating uh, how women feel about 
about themselves and, what, and how women feel about their bodies. But it's not done subtly. Now, the danger with all of this saying it's not done subtly and that's a problem is this is not a film that's trying to be subtle. This is a film that it, its very mission is to be as unsubtle as possible. And so whilst there's a really interesting tension in this film between the older you know, Demi Moore and the younger Demi Moore in the form of Margaret Qualley, and then there's this symbiotic sort of relationship, a literally a, a sort of an emotional um, and beauty a sort of tug of war around body image, uh, around what one's willing to sacrifice in order to have some love. And this is about love. This is about adoration. This is about, this is about uh, Demi Moore feeling that even her younger self being adored and wanted the trade-off the sacrifice uh, is worth making I didn't quite buy into it because as I say there's not a lot in it for the older Demi Moore she's just kind of lying on the floor though she does come out when she's having to be sort of you know when the younger one's having to be recharged and she has to swap you know she does come out and she sees the posters so she sees the kind of evidence of her younger self being cherished and loved and she's on billboards around New York around uh, you know Hollywood and all this kind of stuff but this isn't a film that's demanding logic. And so you're kind of, you do have to strap in with this film for a kind of mentalist, completely mentalist tour de force, which what just at the point where you think, OK, they've just about done everything they can. She's got to be heading towards death. Demi Moore has evolved and, and, and sort of transmogrified into a character from Roald Dahl's The Witches. And whilst I know a lot of critics have been talking about how brilliant she is at the point that she's basically become a sort of old hag Hag, hag. I mean, she looks like an old witch from Macbeth, but she's mental with hair and her bones are getting inflated and she's breaking her limbs and she's got fingernails coming off and teeth and ears and she, her eyes are kind of cataracting and all that kind of stuff. As she kind of heads towards death, you think, well, this film can only go in one direction, but it doesn't. Just at the very point where you think most films would finish or find some way to resolve itself, you look at the clock and you go, oh my fucking Christ, there's another hour to go. And what happens? Well, the younger Margaret Qualley re-injects herself with the substance. So we get a sort of biohack feedback. You know, if you turn a camera towards something, you know, if you kind of clone, 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 or the reason we don't have incest is because you end up with contorting cells and contorting DNA and you get all sorts of kind of errata, don't you? Genetic errata and genetic issues and so people look weird they present with certain illnesses well this film goes there this film that she she's essentially injecting herself with her younger self which is her older self so she becomes a completely monstrous explosion of cellular beauty and again as an idea i love this you know we end up essentially with a character on stage a blob, a globulated sort of creature that looks reminiscent of a cross between the Elephant Man and Toxic Avenger. And, and you've got heads coming out here. You've got Demi Moore's face coming out here. You've got a breast down here. You've got a bottom hanging out here. It's, it's, and it's clearly a pastiche and a satire and a spin on, you know, what is beauty? If you look at what beauty is, beauty is such a self-feeding uh, and self fueling contortion of ideas that actually, when you examine them in close up, they become hideously um, distorted, hideously distorted and distended and distressed. And so you end up with essentially a monster spewing blood out of what looks like a trunk across men everywhere. And it, it, I mean, there were moments in this film where I was quite literally agog. I was like, it's a, it makes choices and it goes to places that you think, no way, right down to, and I'm going to, this is a spoiler review, right down to at the very end when she is nothing more than exploded sack of flesh and nipple and buttock and bone and gristle on the floor. So imagine a pool of it. You have a sort of plasma-like, pizza-like blob of flesh crawling, 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 and it's got Demi Moore's face on the top of it and it crawls and crawls and crawls and it ends the film plonked on the Hollywood star uh, that we saw at the beginning of the film. Nothing subtle, but lots of interesting ideas in there. Lots of, lots of interesting, wild, whacked out, gonzo. This is gonzo filmmaking. It's crazy. On the one hand, I don't want to say it's bad because 
you just don't get films like this made that often. And the fact that Demi Moore is at the heart of it is, is, is just wonderful. Sadly, I think at the moment where Demi Moore becomes this sort of, you know, at the point that she's kind of, she's aware she's, she's mortal, she's been drained of any life that she did have left to her by this younger iteration of herself. And I think this is interesting. The idea that a younger version of you um, becomes so selfish, a bit like, teenage kids can or children can that they don't care they've got no regard for you anymore they just want to use you and extract what they can from you in order to sustain their youthful narcissistic kind of fix of living their life and at the point that there's this real tug of war between older Elizabeth Sparkle, Demi Moore, and younger Elizabeth Smart Sparkle, Margaret Qualley and they essentially start to attack each other and try and destroy each other in a huge fight. I mean, cu another curious detail is suddenly Demi Moore develops superhuman strength from not being able to stand up at one point because she's got such an arthritic, dis disformed, de uh, de deformed knee buckle joint, which just made me cringe when she tries to straighten it, from being totally unable to move to then suddenly charging around. I kid you not, like like a like a an old person possessed i mean she's roaring around the streets and around her apartment and all this kind of stuff um there's all sorts of kind of riffing going on here i was reminded of things like dead ringers the cronenberg film where you know jeremy irons is they're two twins and they they just start to destroy each other and one is one is stronger than the other and and their lives become kind of contorted and destroyed video drone with the video going into the body and all that kind of stuff its messaging is pretty on the nose you you, you know you 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 know know what it's hitting at you know what it's driving at you you know where the parallels are the metaphors aren't really metaphors because you you literally have your face and you get it rammed in it i mean this film literally takes itself and rams itself in your face so there were times where i was just like let me do some of the let me do some of the legwork as a viewer let me do some of the working out let me just decide what's going on here rather than you telling me so clearly and signposting all the way through it if i had to say one thing about this film i've not seen anything like this in an awfully long time i can't remember what the name of that film was that won the palm door that was about a woman having sex with cars that wasn't as extreme as this 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 is ludicrous this is literally to toxic avenger madness and at the end as i say you've got cellular body mass crawling across the floor with demi moore's face on top i mean presumably this is going to be shown at the prince charles cinema as a cult classic for years to come but i don't necessarily think that's what the director would have intended in there somewhere is some really are some really interesting ideas around um you know how we are many things you know because you know even as a man we all worry about our loss of looks our aging our loss of health how long can we be how to, to what age are we visible to anyone else and i think this film speaks to those those issues and those those dilemmas it's interesting in its depiction of youthful exuberance and the and the and the addictive kind of you know lure if you like of fame and love even if it means that you're draining your essential life source uh, to to nothing uh, and then it also speaks to regret you know some really neat moments most of the non-verbal moments actually from Demi Moore I thought when she was speaking and she was ranting and she was cross it was a bit eggy it was a bit like Winona Ryder on acid um, but there were moments where you could see her when she when she she's phoning up the the the, the creators of the substance who send her it or she gets it off she's phoning them up at a certain point she's going it's got to stop I want it to stop and they're like well if you stop it you won't be able to come back and you can see her going well maybe Okay, she's ineluctably drawn to just extract the last vestiges of, of youth. And then, and yet again, you've got this kind of, this device of kind of injecting and then cross fertilizing and then genetic feedback and genetic contortion and genetic, just genetic wrongness going wrong. In fact, there was a moment in this where the eventual monster which she becomes was very reminiscent. Don't know if anyone out there remembers the film, I think it was by Ken Russell called Altered States where uh where this creature just he becomes a sort of a sort of a blob of kind of human kind of impulse uh and just cellular kind of activity this is the genetic feedback horror of a constant pursuit of beauty and if you were to keep re-injecting yourself with the same desire to stay young you end up this bilious bloated corpsey pustulating bloody thing i mean it does a very good job of taking the sexiness of buttocks and the sexiness of boobs and body parts and reducing them into slabs of meat i mean there's literally one moment in this film where she holds up 
a breast, but it's just dismembered as a thing with a kind of long piece of flesh attached to it. And you, it kind of, it plays with your, your sense of body parts and what we see in them and how we sexualize them and how is, it's about context. But I would say this film also struggles to not fall foul of doing the very same thing to Margaret Qualley, the version, the younger version of Demi Moore's character. Uh, this film kind of almost indulges in doing the same thing to her, objectifying her uh, and make it eroticizing her as the film is kind of saying men do and society does in general. It's ludicrous. It's it's off the wall. Don't approach it. If you're going to get anything from this film, don't approach it with a view to, well, it needs to make sense. None of it makes sense. Think Faustian Pact. Think Dorian Gray. Think, you know, think Toxic Avenger. I mean, it's it's weird. It's gory. But it is kind of very firmly in the... It's not sexually explicit, for example. I mean, there's a few sex scenes, but they're not sexually explicit. It's just very bloody and very squelchy. It's probably the squelchiest film I think I've ever seen.